now it's time to preview an upcoming game. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be responding to an ad that we saw in the newspaper. The ad said, Heroes Wanted. This is a game on Kickstarter right now from Action Phase Games. It's for two to five players where we are going to finally get to try to be the superheroes that we have been trying to be our whole lives. These silly little quirks have kept us from being, making headlines, being a real superhero. Today we're going to get to do that by roughing up some minions, some villains, some underlings, grabbing some headlines, getting some fame, and oh yeah, we get to beat each other up too. Let's check it out. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. first thing you do in Heroes Wanted is select one of the four scenarios that come with the game. Each of those scenarios has its own game board, has its own instructions, sort of is a little mini game within the game. And the board's set up to look like a newspaper, which looks pretty cool. This one's called Littering, Loitering, and Jaywalking. It has a little story about what it's about. And we have the board set up here. And down at the board level, you can see that there are these big gray minions and the smaller brown underlings hanging out in the city, getting ready to do some bad things where us, the wannabe superheroes, are going to want to beat them up and KO them. After the scenario is picked, everyone gets three of these hero A cards, and they get to choose half of their hero. You get to sort of customize it every game. So here we have the option of a Medi Mr. Meteor, that's his name. And he has, uh, he's from the Cosmic Faction, and his special, his superpower is called sh uh, Smashteroid. And he gets to deal six damage to a character within a range of two, and if he's injured, he gets to move three. So if he gets hit, gets hit, he gets to run around. And I love the flavor text on all these cards. It's, I crash landed here 30 years ago in a ship shaped what you humans call a bagel. Those are always cool and fun. So we could choose him, or we could choose the dude. Here we go. Dude, he's part of the mutant faction, which means they get two special uh, superpowers. They have a regular one and a mutant power. His uh, superpower is Powabunga, deal five damage to a character within one range, and then retrieve another action, which essentially allows him to pick up some cards. And Wonder Toe, which uh, he gets to knock out a minion within one range, uh, and he gets to lose an injury. Wow, that's pretty cool. And the last uh, choice that you would get here in this case, in this game, is Giraffe. He's part of the Vigilante crew. Pretty interesting. Uh, and his special, his superpower is Neck Wallop. And he deals five damage to a character within a range of two. And the Vigilante factions tend to have a little bit of pressure luck element, where if you roll a die, in this case, if you roll a five or a six, you can deal four damage to another character with range of two. His flavor text is Giraffe's are the nunchucks of the animal kingdom. So you have some cool art here. You have a lot of different variabilities. There's actually four different factions. I'll show you many more of these later. So on my board here, I've selected giraffe as my top half, and then I'm gonna get three hero B cards. I'll get to look at these three and see what do I wanna match up with my giraffe. So here we have dark, which is I deal five damage to heroes, which are other players in the game. If you knock out a hero, I gain two fame, and fame is, a, is about points in this game. Uh, the next one could be Turbo, and in this case, you start the game with an additional maneuver action, which is another card, and then after you move two spaces, deal one damage to a character, so you sort of Turbo there, and the last one, Chris, is a Tiger. You start the game with an additional strike action, your strike actions deal one damage, and just because that even sounds cool, I want to be a Tiger Giraffe, how about that? So that would be my hero, everyone would sort of do that at the beginning of the game. Now, since I'm part of the Vigilante, I get a bonus card specifically for the Vigilante uh, faction, which we'll talk a little bit more later. And the last thing we do is we get a quirk. Now, these are optional. It's an optional part of the game that makes it sort of more fun, more uh, a little bit lighter, a little bit more humorous, is you'll get a quirk card. And for example, this quirk, the quirks are what held this guy from being a superhero in his past you know, in his past life, easily impressed. After another hero plays their superpower, you must clap and give them a compliment. So uh, essentially here you start with 10 fame and anytime someone catches you not doing your quirk, you lower down how much fame you were. So if you don't mess up at all, you're getting 10 points or fame. Uh, but every time you screw up, you're going to be getting less and less. Just to show you a couple more of these creepy. This is one of my favorite ones. You must touch any hero who plays an action with the same printed stamina as the action you played this round and introduce yourself a whisper. Pretty cool. Uh, and constantly concerned. After another hero rests, you must seriously 
console them. So these just add a lot of just fun and flavor to the game. Uh, again, it's optional. Some more serious players might not choose to play without them. Uh, but with me and my group, we love this type of stuff. It makes the game a lot more fun. Everybody, no matter what hero or hero faction type they are, starts with the same five cards. We'll talk about what these do in detail a little bit more. Charge, maneuver, strike, costume, and superpower. And if you, and depending on the type of faction you are, you'll get two more cards. One of them is a special action card. This is going to be uh, for vigilantes, for example. But every faction will have its special card that they'll start with. And then later on, each of those factions is going to get another card that they can unlock for a special card later. So everyone starts with these cards, and let's show you how these cards get used. But before we do that, we got to set up the villain for this round. We would take a villain A card from the pile and flip it over and put him in the villain A side. And we see this is a beast. It's Wooly Rage. He deals damage to each hero equal to the number of heroes in the game. Then we would draw a single villain B card and put it underneath. And now we have a, a modular villain. It's Mama Beast. We have Mama Knows Best and the Beast. This, the Mama is uh, damage dealt to this villain is reduced by one. Uh, to a minimum of one. So there we have Mama Beast is our villain for today. So we're about ready set up to play. Everyone has placed their pawn in one of these blue star spots on the board and we're ready to play. So how the game works is it basically has a hero's phase and then a villain phase each round. And on a hero's phase in order you're essentially just going to play one of these cards. We'll get to what these do in a moment and then after everyone's played a card we'll go through the villain phase. Now the villain phase changes, of course, depending on the scenario. This this is obviously the littering, loitering, and jaywalking scenario. And in this case, the villain moves to the next sequentially numbered space. We saw numbered spaces on the board. And then we advance the threat track, which is this track here, by one. And then the villain litters. If it's if the threat track is yellow for that round, he litters and places uh, an event token uh, on that spot to litter. And then the villains and minions attack. We'll show you how that happens in a little bit. So what are we trying to do during the game? Well, we're trying to kill the villain, obviously. That's how the game ends. It ends once the villain is killed. But during the end game, you're getting uh, fame, or scoring at this point, by knocking out henchmen, uh, the gray henchmen on the board, by knocking out the underlings, which are the little brown guys, knocking out another hero, so two, one, and four points, respectively. If you're able to throw away a piece of litter, that's a scenario-specific goal, or to KO the villain. And there's, there's also some end-game scoring with uh, things that we'll talk about towards the end. But essentially, you're just trying to wallop everybody in the game. So now let's take a look on my turn when I start to play one card. Essentially, everyone does it in order. Uh, let's say here, here's Charge. And what this card does is allows me to move one, and when it says move one, I can move anything up to one, so zero or one, and deal four damage to a character within a range of zero or one. As long as you are the first hero, charge has plus one move. So if I was the first hero, I'd get an additional move. Let's see how this one might work. Now, if you remember, the card I played said move one and damage four. You don't have to move. You can always move up to that number, so I can stay still. Now, notice within range one, which means one hex away for me, there's two underlings, the smaller brown ones, and they uh, have four hit points. So if I damage them four, I will KO or knock them out. The larger gray henchmen take five. Uh, they have high, five hit points. It takes five damage to knock them out. Now, damage does not carry on from turn to turn. So you either knock them out on that turn with that damage or not. And they pretty much start over with all their hit points back the next turn. Also, if there was a hero next to me, like the blue person, I could hit and try to knock them out too. So you're not just trying to knock out uh, minions and underlings. You, try, you can knock out other people and get uh, fame for that as well. So in this case, I did damage of four. So I knocked out this underlink and he would go into my achievements. He'd get dropped right here and now I've KO'd one underlink. That brings us to headlines which are sort of intermediate goals during the game. Uh, one of them is always on the scenario and then you have some random ones that come with the game. There's many of them that come with it. You randomly assign these and we can see oh look at this one's KO'd three underlings. So if you're the first person to KO an underlink you get to mark this and this will be worth three fame and you get to go up in the score track if you're the second person you'll get two points and so on and so forth so these are different sort of intermediate goals that you can look at that will change every game uh and to see so we can ko another hero deal 10, 10 damage to the uh, uh villain uh gain 10 fame so there's different headlines here and then throw away one piece of litter we'll get to that in just a moment the cool thing is it's sort of like a compounding effect because if you're able to get one of those headlines in the paper, you, when you mark it, you're marking it with one of these on your bonus card. And when you take one of these and put it, it essentially activates this. So if I had KO'd my third underlink and I used this to put, put it on the headline, I would be able to move three, a hero at range one gains an injury. So, or I could retrieve an action uh, and then lose an injury, or I could deal four damage to a hero 
or minion at range one. Now there's one of them here that has two of them. So essentially I would have to gain two headlines to activate this one. But if I activate, now this is bonus card is specific for the Vigilantes. And if you remember at the beginning of the game, we got a specific card for the Vigilantes that can get unlocked and it's called Retaliate. So if I'm able to get two headlines, I get to activate this and I gain my Retaliate card, which is the last card in the game that I get to get. It's sort of a special card for the Vigilante sort of uh, faction, which is a, sort of a defense, it's a block card, but again, it allows me to have another uh, card in my deck to think about playing. So that's how sort of bonuses work with, with the goals of Headlines. So if you remember, I played my charge card. All the other heroes in uh, clockwise order would play their one card. They would sort of, you know, resolve all their hits and things like that. And after everyone's played one card, that's the end of the hero phase, and then we go to the villain phase. And if you remember the in-game scoring, if I KO an underling, I get one fame. Which, in the scoreboard, I would move my red cube up to one. Now keep in mind, all the components I'm showing you are prototype components. Um, a lot of the artwork, a lot of things could still change. Uh, although some of it's pretty final, but some of it, like the scoreboard, I know is going to be changing. Where it's going to be some crosswords of some different uh, sort of uh, hero type um, words in the crosswords. So this is the, the uh, scoreboard, and we go up to point one. Now during the villain phase, the first thing that happens, the villain moves to the next sequential spot. Start on one, and he moves to two. And in this specific scenario, or in any of them, when there's these red... Uh, outline boxes and such. Those are places where the heroes cannot go. So they can't be in the street, they can only be on the sidewalks in this scenario. So the villain moves up, and then we move the threat track down. And if it's in a yellow spot, we would do what the yellow thing says here, which essentially is place an event token uh, where he is. This is essentially, in this case, in this scenario, it's litter. So the villain has dropped some litter on the street, and he's standing there. Then the villain and minions attack. And if you remember, the beast uh, Wooly Rage deals damage to each hero equal to the number of heroes in the game. We've got four heroes in the game, so he's dealing four damage pretty much to everybody. Plus we see here, henchmen have a two attack and underlings have one attack. So we'll look at who we're next to uh, and see how much damage they do. Now I'm red again, so all the, the minions and, and underlings always attack at a range of one. And as I just said, they, these guys do one damage, these guys do two. I'm next to this guy, so he does one damage to me, plus the four that the beast gave me, so I have to take a total of five damage. Now if you remember, this is the card I've played already. It's already on the discard pile. Here's the cards that are in my hand, and we look at the numbers. These numbers are essentially our defense, or our sort of our stamina. Now we have to discard, in this case, again, he did, uh, a, I got a total of five damage, so I have to discard up to the number of five. So I could discard my superpower card, which I could defend the whole thing with just the five. Maybe I didn't want to do that, but maybe I want to discard uh, maneuver and press. That's a total of six, and it's at least more than five, so that would defend it. Uh, there's a costume card, which gives me a defense of seven, and it's sort of a defensive card. So if I use it as a, it's, you know, if I if I activate the block here, I get to move one or retrieve another basic or special action, and this is a basic action. So if I wanted to, I could use this to block. It defends seven, so that's good, and I use block, and I will retrieve this card back in my deck, and I've just defended. Now, if I've already played a bunch of these cards, let's say I've played all those, and I have just this one left, and I take five, well, I can't uh, take, you know, I can't defend this damage. So what would happen is, I get knocked out. When you get knocked out, all your cards go here, they get flipped over, and your, your pile here, and you take an injury. Now you have a spot for five injuries. Um, on my next turn, for my turn, I will have to quote unquote rest and pull all these cards up in my hand and that's my entire turn. So it's really bad to get knocked out. Plus the other reason why it's bad to get knocked out, for each injury you have, every time you take damage, you take an additional damage for each injury you have. So if I had four injuries, in addition to the ones that I was taking earlier, I'd take an additional four. So you don't want that to happen. If you never die, if you get all the way injuries, you just end up losing extra fame every time you get hit. So that's sort of how, what would happen if I got knocked out. And as the game goes on, it keeps going like this, where everybody plays a card, and they do their action, and then the villains and the minions attack. We move the threat track down, the villain's moving around the board sequentially. He's dropping off trash in this specific scenario. He does different things in different scenarios. Um, of course, and in this scenario, uh, one of the things you can do is, if you end your movement on one of the trash pieces, you could pick it up. And if you become within one range of any one of these four trash cans, you can drop it off and you're doing a good deed as putting trash in the trash cans. And for each one of those, you get one point as well, or one fame as well. So this is maybe what it would look like uh, you know, as the game went on. We've already seen what the charge and the costume card does. Let me just go through the rest of the cards here. So we have Strike, become the first hero and deal five damage to a character within one range. 
we have maneuver which is move four become the first hero or retrieve a basic or special action by and that means basic or special i can retrieve it from my discard pile back into my deck um, we have superpower which of course allows us to activate our superpower right there and that's obviously going to be different depending on the guy that you pick every game and then we have the special cards so over the course of the game you're knocking out underlings and minions and maybe other heroes to try to gain some of these headlines sort of these intermediate goals which allow you to unlock some things on your card and of course you're really also trying to knock out the villain and as you knock out the villain or do damage you're going to be taking uh, hit points from him and getting some fame for that and of course the last person to knock out the villain gets is sort of the biggest bonus of four and that's when the game ends is when somebody knocks out the villain you there is some end game scoring uh, and you add that to the scoring that you already have and the one that has the most points at the end is the winner now to show you all the different uh things that come with the game here uh you know the different hero cards so look at that we've got uh the machine and we've got you know a cop we've got hedgehog meteor Dude, uh, Weevil, Fist, Lord, you know, those are many Hero A cards. And then Hero B cards. We have Neon, Hobo, American, Giant, Jungle. So there's just a few that comes with tons of these cards. And if you look at the different villain cards, we've got Lightning and Jock and maybe Fang. But he might be El Fang. Or he might be Ape Fang. Or he might be Thousand Year Old Fang. So it's all different types of villains. All right, well, there's Heroes Wanted. So it's designed by Travis R. Chance. Now, he designed Infamy, which made my top 10 games of 2013. It's also co-designed by Nick Little, who helped in the development of Infamy. Now, one of the biggest things this game has going for it is the replayability value of this. You look at all those hero cards and there's literally i think over a thousand combinations between the cards that come with the base set and you can just mix and match them and every game is going to feel completely different because you're always going to be a different uh you know superhero between the, the the actual hero itself and the top half and the bottom half and the combinations are always going to be interesting um and there's those four different factions where even the factions themselves have different personalities it kind of reminded me when i first played it of small world which is a game i love so much and the reason why i love that game is that no two games feel the same you always have that mix and match and, and depending on what you do it changes your strategy for the game and i think that's one of the biggest things that this thing has going for it and of course the artwork and the style of those superheroes is just really fun to look at uh, shoot, you can even just have fun just looking at those cards and just playing, looking at them together and just trying to play some funny, crazy, morphed monster together and just laugh about that on your own even without even playing the game. Now, the quirks, I think that's an also thing that has a great appeal to a lot of people because it takes this game that normally would be a serious, you know, card playing combat type of game with, a, you know, a scenario driven, almost like a light dungeon crawlish feel. But it, if you want to play with it, it adds sort of like that humor and that little lighter party style game on top of it, which some people are going to really like and some people may, you know, they might rather the serious game, but it's there to lighten it up. So it kind of gives you a feeling of it's a serious game, but it kind of it's not. It makes it fun. So that's interesting as well. Also, the amount of scenarios, the four different scenarios. So obviously each scenario that you play is going to feel very different from all the other ones. So you match up the different superheroes the different villains the different four scenarios and you literally have a millions of games that you could probably play and never have the same game play out twice so if this looks good to you uh, and you like the idea of this whole trying to be a wannabe superhero to conquer and just beat beat up everybody good guys bad guys trying to grab that fame grabbing those random headlines if it looks interesting to you these guys at action phase games would love to have your support on Kickstarter. It's live right now. There's a link below me that you can click to go on, learn even a little bit more, and hopefully if you look in something that's gonna interest you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.